G'day guys, today I'm excited to share with you seven super simple indoor activities. So I think these activities are fantastic to use in times that are a bit tricky throughout your day. So what I mean by that is if you have a think, what is a difficult time of your day? So for some people, you know, it's first thing in the morning, you're trying to have your cup of coffee and the kids are just onto you. They're requesting things, they're asking things. And you just want to finish your coffee. So if you've got this set up, then you can just say, hey, go do that activity. And you're still there. You can still answer some questions and guide them if they need it, but you're not actively involved and you get to finish your hot coffee. A time that I've used these quite a bit is post nap, you know, that afternoon time. I just found it was a really good reset after a nap to just get going with play again. Or for some, it's that dinner prep, you know, you're trying to prepare dinner and the kids are onto you and you just want to have a bit of space to do a bit of cooking. So by having an activity that they can go and do, you're in the same area because they do like to be close to you and you can still supervise, but it just keeps them occupied while you're making dinner. So do what works for you. If you want weekday inspiration as well for activities, then come follow me on Play Activities with Mama. It's an Instagram account that I've dedicated to play activities. When I filmed this video, my daughter was between 20 and 23 months. But as we know, every child is different and unique. So follow their interests. Let's get into it. The first activity I've got is rescue the animals. So basically it involves some tape. I'm going to use painter's tape, um, a baking tray or cookie sheet and some dinosaurs. The best way to get your child most interested in this activity is to choose something that they're very interested in. So I'm going with dinosaurs, we're interested in dinosaurs, but if it was farm animals or safari animals, use what interests them, or if it was ponies, they're gonna be far more interested in the activity if they're already interested in the little animals. And I just grabbed some tape and stuck them down. And the idea is that, that that your toddler will pull off the tape and set free the animals. So this is a fantastic indoor activity, rainy day activity, dinner prep activity, need to get something done and keep your little one occupied activity. You could even do a miniature activity like this for the car, if you're going on a car trip or if you're going on a plane trip as well. So I leave it like that, which is really inviting. It's very inviting to come and play with this. The skills that you're helping to develop are color recognition as you talk through the different animal colors, uh, pincer grip, fine motor skills as you pull off the sticky tape, problem solving, because once the tape starts sticking to you, how are you going to deal with that? It's a great activity, guys. The next activity is pouring and scooping chickpeas. You don't have to use chickpeas. You could also use rice or rolled oats or pasta, whatever you've got. These are hard chickpeas and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with them. Um, so perfect sensory play. I add in a couple of different size scoops, ramekin and this container, this little egg holder, just both from the kitchen cupboard. I first did this activity when I needed two hands to prep dinner and so I just grabbed what I had in the kitchen and this is great for fine motor skills so working on using scissors in a really fun way. This one's actually a bug catcher that you can get on eBay or Amazon. Much cheaper than looking for fine motor equipment. So I set up the activity like this and she just starts filling up the container, pouring it into the other container, pouring it back in like that, and just on repeat. Pouring is a really popular activity with toddlers and it's easier to start off pouring with hard materials than water. If you wanted to make a colored theme, then you could use red lentils. If you're doing red sensory play, um, if you wanted green, you could dye some rice green. This activity's worked really well, but I'm super careful and I do not just have this on the shelf because of the size of the chickpeas. I make sure that I'm closely supervising her when we're doing this activity. Tell me in the comments, what have you used instead of chickpeas?
So the next activity I've got is hide the animals. So using a muffin tin. Dinosaurs are popular in our house at the moment, so we're gonna use those. I'm just gonna fill it up completely with animals, or you could even leave a spot without one. Then I'm gonna cover them with rice. And then what they'll do is they'll find them, pour out the rice back into the bowl and hide the animals again. So it's just a fun activity showing cause and effect. The animal was there, now the animal's gone, as well as pouring practice. I'm using an underbed storage tub just to keep it all contained. And then you can put a sheet down or a mat down. And we just have a simple rule stays in the tub or it goes away. Once you've got a rule like that and you stick to it, they know what the consequence is and then they just don't do it. The activity is working on skills of pouring, fine motor skills, problem solving, cause and effect. It's a great activity to do indoors, rainy days, dinner prep or if you're trying to do laundry and you need your spare hands and for me it's not that messy because it's all contained in the tub for younger children you could spend a bit more time there talking through what you're doing talking about the animals and where they are and explaining the process for them for older ones you could take some animals away so that they're searching to try and find the animals and they may not be in those spots as well as talking about the colors and then of course down the track once they actually know what these dinosaur names are, then you can say that as well. So you can see with these activities, you can make them easier or more challenging depending on where your child's at. Animal. So this next activity is using rubber bands and a paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll. And what you do is you just put on elastic so as you can see it takes strength in your fingers so it's great for fine motor skills this was actually really challenging for my toddler because even when she opened it it still wasn't able to go over the top so we tried it with two hands as well but that was still difficult for her really little hands so in the end what we did is I grabbed a dinosaur and we put it around its neck this is a really simple activity, but we've done this again and again and again. So you can do it with two hands, you can do it with one hand. The head of the dinosaur is small enough for her to even do it this way. If you didn't have a dinosaur, then you could use a giraffe. Dinosaurs are popular here, so this is a good one. If you didn't have rubber bands um, to put around its neck, you could try baby links as well. To add even more learning to this, you can talk about the colors as you're putting them on. You could color sort first off, so put them into orange, green, yellow, and have them in piles and then put the green ones on, put the orange ones on, and put the yellow ones on awesome fine motor activity and it's really fun and we actually use it as a bit of a quiet activity just to quieten down before naps as well. All right, for this next activity, I went through the recycling again, which you've probably noticed I do like to go use a lot of recycled items, whether it's egg cartons or bottles or such. This is doing a pom-pom push, so pushing in the pom-pom into the bottle. Now I have about three of them set up. Depending on what bottle you use and then getting the pom-poms out again. This activity is great for after breakfast. I have this activity set up on her little table near our dining room table and just have the pom-poms out so it's nice and inviting and she comes along and pushes them in. Just like that. I've actually, I used this when she was a baby too and being large pom-poms, they stayed in there, they weren't falling out and I stuck with three so we didn't lose any and all in different colours. Green. Green, well done. Ah. So to make that last activity, I could use smaller pom-poms to put in and then empty out again. 
a great posting activities. Toddlers love posting things in and then getting them out again. So the next activity you can use the same bottle is this time adding in tongs. Okay, so using tongs to grab the pom-poms and put it into the bottle. This is developing fine motor skills and is far more challenging. And as well as saying the colors as you're going or counting how many are in there, emptying them out and going again. So a great activity for color recognition, for beginning counting and for working on fine motor skills with the tongs. Black, red, purple, orange, yellow, white. Also with this activity, you could ask for the red pom-pom and they put the red pom-pom in, purple, black, orange. So then they're having to think about what pom-pom they go to first, then using their fine motor skills with the tongs to get the pom-pom and then put it into the bottle. Great activity and so simple. This would be an easy one to do in a restaurant or if you're traveling on an airplane or in a car for a long road trip. Thanks heaps for watching guys. Take care, bye.